Hey guys, a phobia again. All right, so before we start, first thing I want to say is thank you so much for the community, YouTube, the Twitch. We hit our thousand subscribers. I applied for the partnership program for YouTube. We were just waiting on the review. So, dude, everyone, just fucking crazy. Thank you guys so much for all that love and support. Uh, today, what we are going to go over is the best. 2v2 comps to climb with, in my opinion, things that I've tried out, tested, uh, either done with viewers or friends, uh, the best success I think you guys are going to get with these comps. So it's going to be a 2v2 uh, composition guide. So we're going to go into that. I'm going to go over what uh, what comps are best and what are the strengths and weaknesses of each comp uh, in, in a little bit of detail. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this video. Let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. Reach me live at twitch.tv slash a phobia gaming and I, I again thank you guys for all the support I, I'm, I'm like so grateful for you guys thank you all right so the first thing we're going to start out with here is our our b tier right there's no real c or d tier uh comps when it comes to what i'm going to go over but like the b tier comps are just like they're they're they're, they're good but they're, they're lacking something to, to make the comp just excel at higher ratings or like maybe certain comps just destroy you and there's a lot of those comps on the ladder so we're gonna start with the B tier. Um, starting out, we're gonna go ahead and throw in the the hunter and the shadow priest. You know, scatter play is a three v three name. We'll just keep to the same composition names here. So scatter play uh, is gonna be that B tier. Um, the reason why I have scatter play in the B tier is it has a crap load of CC guys, like a crap load of CCs. You have your your traps, you have your your silence mind bombs if you want to go the silence mom mind bound uh, route if you can stun. Like, you know, it's a comp that you can go and get the stun, silence, uh, fear off of. You can run that too. Um, so, like, there's so much CC you can get in this comp. The reason why it's in the B tier is it just lacks survival. You have huge goes you can do, resonate arrow, uh, true shot aura, double tap. You have all the big damage you can do with the mind games. But if you don't kill, you're on a timer, right? You're on this timer that, you know, the, the, uh, the survival hunter or the marksmanship hunter, whatever you're playing with, don't really have a lot of sustainability. So, eventually, you know, they're going to dwindle down, you're going to dwindle down, and there's a lack of peels, right? You have either your CC for, for kill opportunities, and if you use that CC for peels, then your goes on kills are, are a lot longer, and then you, you end up losing, right? So even though the comp has a crap ton of damage and a crap ton of CC, it lacks survival, and it lacks peels. And in a, in a burst meta, if you don't have survival or peels, you're going to fall short, and that's why we have it in the B tier, um, just for that reason. Uh, the next one I'm going to run, we're going to go and run around with is... The Windwalker. And a lot of you guys are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Windwalker's like so good. They do so much damage. It's the same situation, right? Just like a hunter. You have extremely crazy, extremely crazy one-shot potentials with this comp. You have extremely good reset potential with this comp. The Windwalker can off-heal or heal himself. He can off-heal, throw uh, Ring of Pieces to peel for you. Um, but at the end of the day, you lack CC, right? You have your CC. He might have a slower route, but he has really nothing for you. Like He has a long... Stun, he has uh, in cap that actually takes your dots off, so it's actually getting rid of pressure if he has to peel, and and eventually you guys just dwindle down if you don't kill somebody, right? It's the same situation. Lack of peels, huge damage, great off heals, but lacks the peels if they go you, right? You have all the peels in the world for him, but they go you, which a lot of comps will, that's where you lack it, right? Because Windwalker's just going to run away, he's slippery, he ports, and this is where I, why it's in the B tier. It's just because of the peels. If there's more peels, this would be up in that ARS tier. All right. The next one we're going to go over, guys, real quick, is going to be that Ellie Shaman Shadow Priest. Now, this one has really good potential to be in that A tier. Um, you have huge, huge damage on your mind games. Void Eruption goes with his Stormkeeper um, goes and, and, and his Covenant ability. Uh, the, the, the Shock one, where it increases his, I think it's his, chance to do two or three uh, lava bursts or whatever i'm not completely versatile with the la class um but i mean you have the big one shot right you both kind of this huge damage that goes out there and uh, drops the sky fear and just blow people up uh you have huge off heels right you have huge off heels with this comp so your sustainability is high um but you lack the c you lack the cc when it comes to peeling right you have the hex the cap totem so you have a hex which is great but it's on a cooldown uh and a lot of classes can dispel it and then you have the Cap Totem, which can DR with your um, your Psychic Horror, right? So there you go. There's your CC right there, right? You have Wind Shear and Grounding, and, and a lot of things are disruptive, but no real CC. Uh, you know, you have Frost Shock. 
uh, which can slow people. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be enough uh, when you have the, these melees just sitting on, uh, most likely going to be on the Shadow Priest, which is you. And you don't really have a lot of CC there, especially if the healer can just cleanse Hex. And then you have no CC uh, for, for peeling. So, all, you know, again, you have huge damage. But a big drawback to Ellie Shaman, Shadow Priest, is it's, it's a very scripted go. People know when the damage is going. And guess what? Stormkeeper comes out. Guess what they do? Uh, lighter and they just line aside it so another reason why this isn't b tier instead of a or s tier is just it's scripted lack of cc and not it's not just damage yeah like a lower range you can just one shot people but this is a success guide right what's gonna be the best chances for getting higher ratings in the 2v2 and yeah like 1800 maybe 2k this could be a good comp but at the higher ratings you're just gonna be sitting there doing nothing because they're just gonna line aside you they're gonna run come back especially with windwalker Resto shaman windwalking or holy pilot they're just gonna line aside you Wait for your cooldowns to go away, and then it's going to run back at you and kill you. So this is another reason why I have this here sitting at the B tier. All right, the next comp we're going to go over uh, is going to we're going to go into our, our our A tier comps. All right, so we're going to move this over here. Uh, one of the comps that I feel are just so good is going to be this Feral Shadow Priest composition. This composition right here is actually ridiculous when it comes to how much uptime you have. Um, and the only reason it falls short of the S tier is 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 it has a lot more uh, cross cross CC you can do here, a lot good off heals and a lot more sustainability. Um, but you still are lacking CC because Cyclone DRs with your your horror, your mind control, so you're still lacking the control. Normally, a Feral Druid is wanting to stun on the kill target to kill, so he's not actually assisting with the CC chains onto the healer. So again, like you're 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 kind of losing that cc potential but what, why this comp is in the a tier is the consistent damage the instant off heals from the feral druid right the instant off heals and he can kite all day so he can kite all day he can stun uh in like niche situations to keep you alive then heal you you guys can kind of reset a little bit better together more than you could reset with a wind walker so this is why that's in the a tier huge damage huge opportunity to just destroy people and it's actually good into rogue mage which rogue mage just destroys a lot of the comps right now so this is actually good into Rogue Mage, him being an invis, him being able to go bear form, him not being able to get polyed if they go you. Uh, it, it's, it's actually really good because you guys can kind of sustain a lot longer and leave these goes. And if you can beat Rogue Mage in twos, a lot of your wins going from the 1800 to 21, 2200 are going to come from beating Rogue Mages. So this is why that's in the A tier. Um, another A tier comp I want to talk about, speaking of Rogue Mage, is going to be that God composition, the shadow priest mage all right so the reason why this is an a tier comp is you have crazy amount of control right you have fears stuns silences um you got the mind controls you got the polys you got the ring of frost you got the dbs if he's playing uh fire which he should be playing fire um and then you have the crazy one shot potential of the fire mage just going off on people right just going off on people he has triune ward legendary right so he's sustainable he can heal you're sustainable you can heal if people are going you he can poly you can poly fear stun poly uh, mind control and just keep resetting until you're ready for your go then you guys can do a big cc chain on the healer and then just destroy whoever you're on or you can just cc the dps and silence the healer and just destroy the healer this is why this is in the A tier. There's so much versatile with this comp. Um, the only real downside is if he has to poly for peels, you're losing pressure. He it gets all your dots off, right? Which means you're not getting insanity, which means you're kind of just having to get to a full reset. And a lot of the times, I can stop the, the pressure. And unfortunately, pressure is everything. So that's why it's not S tier. Because the polys, the CC you guys have available to you, stop your pressure. Um and uh other than that i mean this comp this comp has it all uh if it just if you know if Polly just didn't take off your dots or or uh maybe the mage had like a ability to heal you personally you know what i mean which is obviously wishful thinking um this would be a lot better it being that s tier but right now it could be i think it could be anywhere from a to s uh i just put it in the a tier because i've, I've had a lot of goes where uh like my pressure is nullified because we're having a poly on 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 uh on resets so I just I stuck it in the A tier. It could be S tier, but for me it's A tier. Um, the next comp I want to go ahead and talk about real quick is that Owl Play Boomkin Shadow Priest. Um, this kind of has a lot to do with the Feral Shadow Priest setup, um, but you have a lot more um, control with this comp and like how you CC because unlike the Feral Druid, you have Root Beam for the for the healer, right? You have Root Beam 
and then you guys can just all in and kill somebody, right? You can psychic core the kill target. Uh, if he doesn't want to run root beam, he can bash the kill target and try to use the beam as a kick on the healer, and then you still just go all in into a stun, into a fear, into a silence, into a mic control, however you want to do it. Um, but, you know, Convoke is actually ridiculous for 2v2s. If you get a CC chain lined up, they can't stop it. It just one-shots people. Or if he's going to carrying ability, he just gets a lot stronger goes on his goes, and it's more consistent pressure. Um, but either way, this comp is really good. It has the off heals. He has the bear form. He can't get CC'd by Rogue Mage. Um, he can stay in stealth until Rogue Mage opens. There, again, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, the only downside to this is it's kind of scripted because, like, you know, people are watching that that uh, his his energy bar fill up. They're like, oh, he's he's building, building, building up his 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 energy. We're getting ready to go. He's about to get burst off here. Um, and and people are kind of seeing like, okay, his bar is full. They're about to pop off, and they can line aside it, right? And if he's running Convoke, they can just Trinket Stun, Trinket Silence, Trinket Fear, Trinket whatever, and stop to Convoke. And then if he's running the Night Fae. So, again, it is there is scriptedness to it. it is, there is counterplay to it. Um, but, again, you have, you have so much control. You have a, lot more, a little bit more CC with this comp. So that's why it's, in the, it's, it's also in the A tier, uh, along with that Feral. All right, guys. Now the time we're kind of been waiting for here, right? The... S tier composition. What is the S tier composition? What makes it S tier? Why are these comps so good? Let's jump into it. First and foremost, I'm sure you guys already see it here. The Rogue Shadow Priest. All right. The Rogue Shadow Priest is such a good 2v2 comp. I would say it's a better 2v2 comp than it is a 3v3 comp. And uh, we'll go over that. I will, I will be putting out a 3v3 comp here soon. Uh, updated composition guide. Um, but for right now, we're going to go over why this is so strong. So if you play this comp, the right way you can almost guarantee kills in the opener right um certain comps obviously have more to tr more to trade than others but i'm telling you right here you can go in for a sap on the healer right you guys open up uh you go for a kidney shot on the healer if he trinkets that you blind him if he doesn't trinket that you blind him anyways if he trinkets the blind you silence him right or if he trinkets trinkets the blind he can duel the kill target to reset the the stun drs then uh, you can silence, then you can stun, and then you can still start your chain with like what will be a, a fear or a, a sap, a smoke bomb, and there's still so much you can do. The, the, the train, the, the, the actual amount of CC you can do is beyond crazy in this comp in 2v2. And then guess what? At the end of the day, if you don't get the kill, you can just shadow step back to you. If you're at distance, you guys LOS. If whoever they're playing with tries to chase you, you bring it behind pillar, and then you just shadow dance, reset the go, and then you just kill them again. It is way too crazy in 2v2 how good this comp is and it does good into rogue mage which is a, again rogue mage rogue healer anything that can beat rogue x or mage x is good for you this is a good comp for you great for 2v2 um again the, the only downside to this comp is you're both squishy so if somebody actually catches you or let's say a warrior stops you war banner intervenes uh with the overwatch talent and then just, just stops you then yeah you're kind of on the back foot but if you play it right that's not going to happen right if you play it right and you're super quick with the go this is a great comp to, to just carry that ladder just because of the comps and if you just know how to set up. Um, let's go ahead and drop this down. Uh, the next one we're going to go over real quick is the Ret Shadow Priest. Ret Pallies are, if you're no one, no one's like mind blown by Ret Pallies right now, right? Extremely strong War to Glory heals, extremely strong um, utility for team with, uh, you know, Blessing of Sanctuary, blanket of, uh, Blessing of protection uh blessing of sacrifice like if you can have a good rep on your team who can time these things perfectly i am telling you you are just in, you won't you might never lose like you have so much healing between this comp especially if you're running the measure contemplation legendary which you all know i run which is that shadow man healing legendary you guys just live forever right you, you have the, the rep pally healing you guys up and then you're, you're stacking up your measure contemplation he gets in trouble you one heal him you get in trouble he one heals you sacrifices you sinks you like there's so much you guys can do and it's good into warrior healer comps which is a really strong counter to to shadow priest right and the only downside to this is you beat the warrior healer comps a lot of the time with this comp, right? Which is great, but it's not the best into rogue mage. But if you live the rogue mage go, you're almost guaranteed to win rogue mage if you can live the initial go without trading too many cooldowns, right? So if you play it right, you know, eye for an eye, he uh, uses his shield, uh, maybe not bop instantly because you, you could die there. Uh, and then maybe you get like a silence onto the, the mage, click, you know, purge combustion, maybe stun the mage after that heal him up without getting kicked there's, there's things you can do to survive and if you get the you know if you get it going or you read what's happening right you're, you're gonna win rogue mage so again we could go into rogue mage good into warrior healer 
which is dominating the ladder, and really good into Windwalker Healer, which is dominating the ladder. So this comp is like one of the best comps you could possibly play, and one of the funnest comps you could possibly play in the entire game uh, when it comes to 2v2. I'm promised you guys, you guys get some good synergy with the Rep Pally. You Rep Pally out there, get good synergy with the Shadow Priest. One of the best comps you can play. Gonna get you that rating. Gonna skyrocket. I promise you guys. All right. The last composition, guys. The last composition. That Shadow Play 2v2. Affliction, Warlock, Shadow Priest. This only works if the Affliction Warlock is running his legendary that gives his corruption a slow. All right, it only works if he's using that. The reason why is everyone knows this comp is just disgustingly good in threes, right? It was a sleeper. People are like, oh, warlocks are bad. Well, as warlocks got the legendary, as they start getting gear, as plays probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest comp available to Shadow Priest, other than that warrior Shadow Priest Wrestle Shaman. Um, as play is just redonkulous right now. It's, just, it's a huge counter to a lot of melee cleaves, and that's no exception for the two v two bracket. All right. Same situation, right? You set up your, you set up the gateway. If somebody's trying to stop his gateway, your job is to let him get the gateway off because that's a huge factor for this to work. You run out, you stun whoever running in. If they trinket, you fear them. If they trinket, you silence them. Whatever they are, gateways up, perfect. You got to set up your, you got to set up your goes. If they go you, your whole job is to keep them out in the open while using your 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 mobility. You don't have a lot, but it's to use that mobility and not take damage. So, you know, Warrior runs up on you, right? He gets the Corruption Soul on him. He charges you. He Storm Bolts you. Great. That's fine. What is he popping? Is he popping Kyrian on top of that if he's a Kyrian Warrior? If, if the answer is no, you sit it. You just sit the damage. If the answer is yes, you can Trinket Fade out. Get your mobility because he's slow. Fade gives you movement speed. You're Trinketing. You're running away. He even say Heroic Leaps to you. You take the Gateway, right? He has nothing to do. You're out of the way. As he starts coming towards you, you can be pre- uh, door shadows away, maybe line of sight, let him take some damage. Whatever you got to do is what you got to do, and you just got to kite in circles, right? The next time he connects to you, if it's big damage, maybe dispersion, maybe desert prayer cookie. You know, there's so many things you have to do, but in the comp of shadow play, your entire goal, if they're going you as a shadow priest, is to keep them in the open, let your warlock dwindle him down. Once he gets a UA up on the healer, you put your dots up on the healer so he can't dispel your dots, and then you're just dwindling them both down, dwindling them both down. Once you actually have your go, you get a little bit of space and you have your go. A good thing that I always do as a Shadow Priest and threes and twos is I always go healer when I have, there's a UA up, right? I go into Void form. I get the healer like 70%. Mind games. He either has to dispel mind games or heal through it or dispel UA and get killed. And then I silence, right? So like he, he they go on the healer. You get him up. There's a UA. You don't got to silence right away because if he dispels, you get that UA silence. And then you can silence out of that, right? Or... He just has to heal through mind games. And it's a win-win situation, right? You have that dispel protection, and then you still have your stun silence out of that. So I'm telling you guys, it's so good. And if they go the UA lock, it's this, and this is how you, you UA locks want to want to kite. I'm gonna give you a brief rundown, right? Somebody charges you, right? You go out in the open, they charge you. If it's a warrior, I'm, gonna give, I'm only giving you guys warriors because it's a great example, right? Because they have multiple ways to get to when they first got to get on you. So a warrior charges you, you use your demonic circle. They heroic leaps to you, you use your gateway. He, let's say he has a second charge. If he has a second charge up. Then uh, you have your priest grip you, right? You want to save the night fae for when the, 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 the priest is in CC. So then the priest grips you. And at that point, they have no mobility, and you start dotting everybody up, and you do damage. And then the next go, you do the same thing. Demonic circle. Then the gateway is probably going to be on cooldown. Use your night fae, night fae. Uh, then the, maybe the shadow priest, you know, mind controls them off you. Your whole point is to keep them out in the open, but you're, you're kiting the entire time, right? You're not worried about damage until you have your range, and then you get your damage. So it's very easy, guys. Very easy for this comp. Super strong. Probably the best 2v2 comp I love to play the most other than Red Shadow Priest. But this comp feels so easy. It's so good. The Shadow Priest can just kill healers. If they go, if they go the Affliction Lock, your job as a Shadow Priest just kill the healer, right? Get a UA up on the healer, blow the healer up, you win. It's super easy. Um, very, very fun. You'll find the comps a lot of fun. Uh, you get a good UA lock. You guys can pretty much win every game. Um, and that's about it, guys. That's about it for the 2v2 comps. There's not a lot of them you want to run. There's a lot more you can run, but not a lot that are going to be good for the ladder to grind the ladder. And this is why I'm coming out with this specific guy because I know a lot of people want to grind 2v2 because 3v3 burst is maybe too high or they're grinding gear and the gear is not, just, is not enough for 3v3. This is what I would recommend you Shadow Priest running out there. And if you are the other people in these compositions running with the shadow priest is success as well right especially if you're in that ars tier for shadow priest you guys can get huge success i wish the best of all y'all if you have any questions comment down below 
reach me at my Twitch. If I missed anything or you have any ideas or questions of other comps, let me know. Um, and I will be coming out with the 3v3 updated guide because I did come out with one earlier. I'm going to make an updated one because things have changed for 3v3. Um, a lot of these comps in twos actually work in three, so you'll see that too. But uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. Like, please. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys next time.